Welcome everyone to the perfect tips and tricks with OESD. I am Carrie. We have a slightly different uh, uh, episode today. We are not streaming live due to technical difficulties, um, but all the same information is here. So we're really glad that you're watching um, this video. I am going to um, kind of get right into it. We have Kimberly Dotson with us. She is going to talk to you all about cutaway stabilizer. So cutaway stabilizer is something that I think is kind of underused sometimes. We get so caught up in um, making, you know, not wanting stabilizer to be on the back of projects sometimes that we don't always reach for the right stabilizer in our box of stabilizers. So today we're talking about cutaway. Um, as a reminder, tomorrow we're going to be doing our Q&A with all of our wonderful uh, OESD panel members. And then Kimberly will be back with us on Friday to talk about something that she will remind me of. Kimberly, what are you talking about on Friday? Tearaway stabilizer. Tearaway. I should have been able to figure that one out. Um, so let's bring up Kimberly. Uh, Kimberly, uh, you are kind of hiding behind your PowerPoint, and that's fine. So you're you're all right back there. We know you're there. Uh, your I'm PowerPoint here. is ready to impart okay. all of the the uh, wonderful cutaway knowledge upon us. So why don't you take take it away? Okay, we're gonna do this. All right. So um, so today's cutaway stabilizer day, and like Carrie said, it's kind of one that. I feel can be underused because um, everyone thinks it's just for clothes or things like that. So I'm gonna show you some different things that we use cutaway on, but you will see some clothes. Um, and so anyway, so here we go. Let's talk about um, a couple things first. One, um, I just wanted to remind you that uh, the all the stabilizers, the categories are color coded. So today is red for cutaway. And I also wanted to um, show you this little chart. And this is on our website and we'll post a link so you can find it. Uh, amazing things are on, on the website. So I, um, but this is one thing that uh, you can find on there, in but there's all sorts of videos and other things. So I encourage you to go and not just look at designs, but go and kind of get looking at the, the projects and there's just so much information there. Uh, so, but to read this chart, uh, in the left-hand corner, you'll see a design density guide, um, and that just shows you some symbols that are um, kind of represent the different densities that you um, the designs would come in. And then down in the left-hand column are different types of fabrics or projects that you might be working with. So you would just scroll down um, and look for the type of fabric you're going to be working on and then go over um, to the right until you find the symbol that represents the density of your design and then go up and you'll see what stabilizer would be recommended for that. So that's just really helpful information for you. Um, and I would print this out and kind of keep it handy with my stabilizers because it's, uh, it's just great um, kind of, if you're ever wondering what should I use, this is a great place to start. So cutaway stabilizer. Um, cutaways uh, can be used on any fabric um, or almost any fabric. There's a couple things I wouldn't use them on, like maybe a tool or organza, you know, something that's really sheer, uh, but uh, they're very versatile, the, probably the most versatile stabilizer. You're really going to want to use um, cutaway on anything that stretches. Uh, that's going to help keep it from distorting during the embroidery process. And then even while you're wearing it, you know, as it stretches, you don't want your um, design to kind of stretch with it. That stabilizer will help with that. It um, cutaway supports um, most the most stitches of any stabilizer type. So when you've got those really, really dense designs, that's when you want to use cutaway. And so with, um, just some examples of fabrics, if you're, um, you know, anything knit, your t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, kids clothes, uh, denims, um, and other types of twills. And uh, and then we always say most wearables. And there's a little phrase that says, if you wear it, don't tear it. And that phrase is kind of good to keep in your head. It's not true 100% of the time, but it is um, true a lot of the time. So I want to show you a uh, um, example of why we say um, cutaway is best on frequently washed and worn items. So cutaway holds um, holds up and helps your design look nicer um, 
for longer on an item that's going to be washed and worn a lot. So, uh, so that would even be on woven fabric. So we kind of talked about it being important for knits and stretchy things, but that theory um, applies to woven things. So I just wanted to show you, this is just a picture of a shirt. Uh, this is my husband, one of his work shirts. It's all, um, I embroidered this for him over five years ago. And there are so many holes in this shirt. It is so worn out. The only thing that looks good on this shirt is the embroidery. And that's because it was stabilized properly. Uh, this one was stabilized with um, a uh, fusible uh, poly mesh. And it also had a, when I did it, I used a topper on it. But, uh, but it's literally, the shirt is totally and completely worn out. Um, but this, the embroidery is still looking good. So, uh, so that's just a great example of why we would want to use a cutaway on um, uh, something that we're going to wear a lot. So to remove cutaway, it gets its name because that's how we uh, remove it. We cut it with scissors. You always want to leave a little bit left. And uh, so a quarter of an inch or so, and you want to trim really, really carefully when you're doing this because um, the worst thing that can happen to you is you have a beautiful design, it's stitched out perfectly, and then while you're trimming your stabilizer, you uh, snip a hole in it. And I know that because that's happened to me. And the most, most of the time, if that's going to happen to you, it's going to be when someone brought you a really expensive shirt and you don't know how to replace it. Uh, and, or if you're like trying to do something last minute and you're on a deadline, those are when those mistakes happen. So just be really careful. If you notice the, the picture, in the lower right, they're holding that fabric away from the stabilizer as they're trimming. And so just go slow and just be really careful and you won't have any problems. So the first stabilizer I want to talk about in the cutaway family is poly mesh. And poly mesh is great for using with um, really light fabrics, like colored. Um, it helps prevent that shadow through the fabric. It's really soft, um, but really strong and actually holds a fair amount of stitches. It's great for those knits and stretchy things. It's great for um, things like baby items or anything that's going to touch the skin because it's so soft. It um, holds a lot of embroidery stitches on your garments and it um, holds up through a lot of washes and wears, just like you saw in my husband's shirt that um, it, holds, it holds up really well. It comes in three colors and it comes, um, so you can get white, beige, or black. So that will help with shadowing on different shades of fabrics. And then uh, um, it also comes in the 10, 15, and 20 inch rolls. So depending on what um, hoop you use the most, you can decide which uh, size you wanna buy as well. So this is just a really um, good picture, just to kind of show you what I mean by it helps prevent that shadowing. And so if you look at the um, the fabric, it's kind of, this is just a lightweight uh, cotton fabric. And on the left-hand side, I slid a piece of regular medium weight cutaway underneath it. And then on the right, I slid a piece of beige um, poly mesh underneath it. And you can definitely see the difference of the shadow uh, on the left-hand side versus the right-hand side. And that, um, that's what I'm talking about when I say, you know, if you had a you know lightweight shirt or something on and you trim that away, you're going to have that kind of a, a stabilizer frame around your design. But if you use the poly mesh, you're not going to have that problem because it's going to um, actually blend in with the fabric. Um, and uh, so you can see with the beige, it really, you know, almost goes invisible. And, you know, it's the same as a... Uh, um, like wearing a beige bra or something like that. You know, the, it blends in with your skin and helps with that. So uh, so that's why um, we would use that. But I thought uh, sometimes you don't really understand how that um, shadowing works until you see an example of it. So this is a sweater that I have and uh, it um, uh, is kind of a really slinky knit and it has ridges in it. It's kind of the worst nightmare for embroidery. Um, but uh, I used poly mesh on it and I used the regular poly mesh, not the fusible on this one, just because the ironing instructions on this sweater said that you couldn't iron it. 
it's um it, i mean it's um kind of one of those fabrics i think it would actually melt if it was ironed so so i used the um the regular poly mesh and i used black and i um and then i use a spray adhesive and so i hooped the poly mesh and use the spray adhesive to stick it down and was able to very successfully embroider uh, on this project. And I used a wash away topper on this as well, just so um, if you're wondering, uh, I used a stitch to on it. And so, uh, but it's held up really well. This sweater is probably a couple years old. I've worn it quite a bit and it looks great still. And once again, just an example of, you know, using the right stabilizer for a garment uh, makes it hold up and just look nice for longer. And then here's another fun project that you can do with poly mesh. So this is uh, one of the designs from the new collection called Freshwater Fish. And uh, I wanted to put it on the, um, the bill of this cap, uh, which is something that, you know, it's um, not really something you can embroider because of the thickness. So, uh, so I made a patch with it. And uh, so what you need to do if you're going to do a project like this, um, I stitched the design directly onto a piece of poly mesh. So there's no fabric involved at all. And I used isocord polyester thread. That's another thing you definitely want to make sure you're using polyester thread for this project. And then I, when I was done, I used a wood burning tool and literally melted the poly mesh around the outside of the design so that all I had left was the design. And and then I was able to use Fuse and Seal, our product that we put patches on with, and fuse that to that the brim of that hat. So, um, so I love being able to do projects like this and put embroidery somewhere where you might not be able to put embroidery easily. Uh, but the other thing that I really want to um, make sure you understand is with poly mesh, the fact that I was able to um, melt that with that wood burning tool uh, is because it's made out of nylon. And sometimes the name is a little bit deceiving because we think polyester, poly, so we think polyester, but it's actually made from nylon. And uh, one of the um, questions that we get a lot or problems that people will contact us a lot about is that they'll say that when they um, ironed their embroidery project that they put poly mesh on, that the poly mesh um, started to shrink and it made their design pucker. Well, that the poly mesh did not start to shrink. What happened was that the heat setting on their iron was probably too hot for nylon and it act, and it caused the um, their um, stabilizer, their poly mesh to start to draw up. And so an iron is not going to get as hot as a wood burning tool. It's not going to melt like this did, but it kind of gives you that idea and a reminder that, uh, that if you heat your poly mesh too hot with your iron, it will kind of cause that puckering, um, that drying up. So, uh, so just be careful to iron at a lower temperature and you won't have that problem if you're ironing your projects that have poly mesh in them. And fusible poly mesh. So what is the difference between poly mesh and fusible poly mesh? It is the fact that fusible poly mesh is fusible. So it's the same stabilizer. It just has that surface on it that um, allows it to be fusible. You'll be able to spot that surface when you pull it off the roll, it's shiny on one side. And so you know that's the fusible side. And uh, so you will fuse that to your project and that will help with things, especially like uh, t-shirts and other projects like that because it will allow them to not shift or, um, or stretch while they're being hooped. So when I embroidered this little, um, it's like a little toddler shirt, uh, I was able to fuse the poly mesh onto the back of it. And then I hooped this item uh, when I embroidered it. And any time that you can hoop, you should hoop. So there's certain things that are just too difficult to hoop or you shouldn't hoop because you could damage them, but it, you'll always have a better embroidery result if you are able to hoop your item. So I, so by using the fusible poly mesh, I was able to hoop this shirt and then um, get a, a, a really nice result without any shifting, no puckering. And uh, one thing though that I like to mention because I, a lot of um, people will ask about is what about the scratching of the, uh, the stitches? 
So the poly mesh itself is really soft. So it's not usually going to bother the skin, but sometimes the stitches that the embroidery you know, from the thread will bother um, certain people. So, so I would recommend um, using gentle touch backing, which is a specialty product. So it's got that um, yellow orange band around it. And this you would put on the back after you're done embroidering and it would cover all those stitches and it would make, um, so but it's not going to affect anyone's skin. And I put this on anything that I embroider that someone's going to wear, regardless of age or anything. I think um, it, it makes it look nicer when it's done. And it also, you never have to worry about, uh, you know, someone saying that the embroidery is like kind of bothering their skin or anything. So, so I, um, I use that a lot. So I just wanted to, um, to bring that up because it is quite commonly used in those types of projects. And then here's just another example of using the fusible poly mesh. So this is a pair of uh, capri pants that I have, and they are kind of a stretch, stretchy twill. There's definitely some lycra in them. Um, and so I, uh, so when I embroidered them, I uh, used the fusible poly mesh for these ones. And uh, the other nice thing about it was I was able, because it's, this is multiple hoopings, so I was able to fuse a big sheet of poly mesh all the way. So when I rehooped, I didn't have to worry about stabilizer again. Um, and I get a lot of questions on these. How did you hoop that? Because, and not embroider through the other side of the pants. So. Um, to be honest, this was done on a commercial multi-needle machine, but you don't have to have a machine like that to do a project like this. Uh, it's not that difficult to undo the seam, the inside seam, and then you would fuse your poly mesh onto that um, area that's going to be embroidered, embroider it, and then stitch that seam right back up. So uh, it's a pretty easy project um, for anyone who has an embroidery machine. And it's kind of fun. Uh, the damask etchings, they, um, one of the cool things about this collection is it kind of has just a lot of little bits and parts. And so uh, you can make some really cool borders to go all the way up a pant leg or down a sleeve or something um, and really build your own design with it. So the next um, category or the next type of cutaway stabilizer is the heavyweight cutaway. And this one, when you take it off the roll, it is so stiff. You think who and when and how would I ever wear that? So it is a really versatile stabilizer. It can be used on almost any fabrics and almost any design. So those really dense designs that are big, this is when you wanna pull your um, heavyweight cutaway out. It's great for your, your denim jackets, sweatshirts, um, really heavyweight knits. Um, and it does get soft after it gets washed. So when you feel it and you think, you know, if I put this, you know, and use this in a pair of jeans, it's going to look like I have a rectangle, you know, inside my leg or something because it's so heavy. Uh, it really doesn't. Once you wash it, it softens right up and you'll, um, and it's really um, soft and, and won't bother you at all. Great for those high stitch count designs and great for um, if you have a multi-needle machine, uh, it gets used a lot. Uh, if you're stitching on things, you know, like those Carhartt jackets or uh, some of those really bulky jackets, this is a great stabilizer for those. So this was a, um, a uh, denim jacket that I had and I used the heavyweight cutaway on it. This design is pretty big and, um, and it looks like it's not super dense, but it actually has a fair amount of stitches in it. And when I did it, it um, on the denim jacket, using the heavyweight cutaway really kind of was the right choice, um, just based, um, you know, it stitched out really well. But then once I, I washed this as soon as I was done and it was really soft and, but it's um, held that design really well. I, my daughter wears this jacket sometimes. And um, I think several of her friends wear this jacket sometimes. So it gets a lot of use. So this is another, um, I have a, somehow acquired like a bolt of this Osnaberg fabric. <laughs> and so I've made a million things out of it, but I, uh, um, but I wanted to use this design for some patio furniture. And so I wanted it to not only be uh, hold up really well, 
So there were a couple things. I wanted to use some of that bolt of fabric because I have to use it somehow, someday. But I, um, but it's not really for outdoor fabric. So a couple things that I did here was um, I used the heavyweight cutaway. This design is very dense, and that fabric is not that heavy. Uh, so, so I used the heavyweight cutaway to support these stitches. But the other thing um, that I did was I um, put a waterproof coating on when I was done. So, um, so that it is uh, actually water resistant when it goes outside. Um, but doing this design with that lighter fabric, the heavyweight cutaway, plus the fact that it's going to be outside, it's going to be sat on, it's going to be in the rain, the snow, everything. Because, um, because by the way, it's still snowing in Wisconsin, in case you were wondering. We, we, we're pretending it's spring, but it's not yet. So medium cutaway, let's talk about when we use the medium. Um, this is probably um, between this and the stable stick cutaway, the two that I use the most. Uh, so medium supports those medium to heavy stitch count designs. It also softens up after washing um, and works with soft things and crisp fabrics. Um, and it works, you know, with your denims, your lightweight denims. I would, if you have a heavyweight denim, I would definitely use the, um, probably the heavier cutaway. Um, but knits, um, stretchy fabrics. So this is a jacket that I found at a Goodwill and it's a really, really light linen jacket. And so this uh, scarab from Boho Soul was um, the perfect choice to go on it, but I needed to make sure that I, it was stabilized really well. So I used the medium uh, cutaway on this one and it worked out perfect. So. Uh, but I liked it because it was kind of a lighter jacket and that uh, medium cutaway um, just worked perfectly. And then this is a um, velveteen, kind of a crushed velveteen looking fabric that I have. Uh, so I embroidered this um, design on it and I uh, used the medium cutaway. This uh, fabric cannot be hooped. It, I would have damaged it by hooping it, caused a burn, um, what we call hoop burn. And so, so I used a 505 spray um, or any type of spray adhesive would work. Um, but, um, and then I hooped the stabilizer and then sprayed it and, uh, and was able to embroider this. And um, so, uh, so this worked really well. This sits on our, you know, is a pillow on one of our, um, some furniture in our house. And so no matter how many times I tell people don't, lay on it, don't sleep on it, don't put your head on it, they still do, and it's still holding up, but I think it's because of the, um, you know, I have that good uh, medium cutaway in there that's really supporting the design still. So, um, so medium cutaway is, um, oh, I think I already talked about, oh, no, I didn't talk about that. It's, um, so, um, oh, nope, I'm missing a slide. We're talking about, um, stable stick cutaway. I'm missing the picture of it. It's like, where's my stable stick picture? So, uh, so um, stable stick cutaway is a medium cutaway stabilizer. It has a light adhesive coating. So when you um, take it off the roll, it's going to have a side of it that is paper. You would hoop that with the paper side up, score it, and then it would reveal that sticky side. So you use it on the same types of projects as the, um, medium cutaway, but you would use it in situations where, uh, you know, things that would be, you wouldn't want to hoop typically, um, but same types of project, jeans, other garments that stretch, those things. Um, also hard to hoop items or um, multiple hooping projects. So this is a um, pillow, this fabric, is like a kind of a satiny fabric, really shifty, really difficult to hoop. And so I put the uh, media or the stable stick cutaway on the fabric actually before I hooped it. And then um, I did hoop it, even though I was using the, the stable stick cutaway, I still hooped the fabric, but by putting that stable stick cutaway on the fabric, it made it so that it hooped really nice and easily, even though it's a real shiny, slippery fabric. 
And then some other fun things with stable stick cutaway. I use this quite a bit. So cork is um, really fun to embroider on. And so I use stable stick cutaway when I embroider on cork. And so this, uh, if you um, like this project, I just always like to know if you go and find this design collection on embroidery online, uh, the project to make this little um, notebook cover is included. Um, you can download the preview sewing information and, and see the information on how to make that project. But I love embroidering on cork and the stable stick cutaway because um, you don't want to hoop cork. It would damage the cork during the hooping process. So using the stable stick cutaway um, makes it so that you can just lay the cork down on that sticky surface and um, embroider away. Another same type of thing um, as cork, marine vinyl. You don't want to hoop that. And so this is um, embroidery on marine vinyl and I use the stable stick cutaway. And then the other thing that uh, we use stable stick cutaway on quite often are, are um, up, you know, our standalone freestanding items. So this is the basket that Carrie did in the sew along last week. And so you will quite often see in the instructions on these standalone items that you will um, put layers of stable stick and you can usually use stable stick cutaway or tear away. But um, so, but it's another example of when you would use that, but it, uh, it adds stability to those projects so that they will um, stand upright better. So we definitely use a stable stick um, cutaway on a, free, a lot of freestanding items. And then there's fusible woven. One of, I don't know, there's just so many things I love about fusible woven. Uh, so fusible woven is a lightweight woven fabric that has one side fusible and it adds body to our light and medium fabrics. So it'll basically allowing us to embroider on a lighter fabric that probably couldn't have supported the design. Um, it's great for large embroidery designs, great for multiple hoopings. It helps keep fabric from puckering. So if you're having, you want to embroider and use that fabric, you just put that fusible woven on it and you're going to have better results. It also helps prevent needle shearing if you're using it on fine fabrics. And typically we don't use it alone. It's, um, it's in the cutaway stabilizer family, but you're usually going to use it in combination with another type of stabilizer. So I want to talk about the puckering thing. So here is a very puckered design. Um, so this is um, a cotton fabric. It's a like a Kona cotton. And I uh, hooped it up with my normal medium um, tear away, ultra clean and tear and embroidered away. And I don't know how well you can see that, but there are some serious puckers in this design. Um, so here is the exact same design on the same uh, type of fabric with fusible woven, same stabilizer, same everything else. The only thing that I did different was I put fusible woven on it. And so if you look puckered, not puckered, very, very big difference there in that design. So, um, so if you're ever having trouble, so Another thing I mentioned um, using um, it so that you prevent needle sharing. So I made this little wall hanging and I use um, silk du peony. And sometimes you'll get some needle sharing on some of those types of fabrics. And so I used the fusible woven and had no problem embroidering um, these designs um, on the silk. And then another example of what we use fusible woven for, if you were at any of our events last year, you may recognize this towel, uh, but fusible woven will help with um, fabric fraying if you're doing raw edge applique. So we put fusible woven on the, the um, red and the turquoise fabric in this project, and that allowed us to do a raw edge applique and not have it all fraying and it'll stay looking nice as we use the item. And this again, <laughs> so, uh, so I just wanted to uh, mention that I use Fusible Woven in this project. So this notebook, so I really want you to go in and take a look if you can and pull up the instructions, but this little notebook cover is lined with uh, cotton fabric. 
So if you open it up, you see a cotton fabric inside. And um, I put fusible woven on it because if you look at the edges of it, um, the top and the bottom, I just use pinking shears in order to finish those off so they look pretty. Uh, but um, in order to prevent the lining fabric from fraying, I used the fusible woven. So, so this notebook uses stable stick cutaway and fusible woven in the process of making it. And then, of course, you know, just because it's an embroidery stabilizer doesn't mean we just use it for embroidery. So I made this little dop kit and uh, I wanted it to have a little bit more body than it did, uh, you know, the fabric did by itself. So I added fusible woven before I, um, to all of my fabric. So if you are a, uh, someone who makes a lot of bags and or purses or pouches or um, those types of things, uh, fusible woven is your friend. Um, uh, it's also great if you, so clothing, it makes a great interfacing to put in your cuffs, your collars and those types of things. It's, it's really anytime you need a, you know, just a little bit more body somewhere, fusible woven is kind of my go-to and I like it because it comes in black and white. So we also use fusible woven in our tiling scenes. Uh, you typically, if you pull up a tiling scene instructions, they'll say to put your fabric um, or put fusible woven on the fabric before you start and then use the, um, depending on the tiling scene that it'll give you instructions on the other stabilizers. But we um, always use the fusible woven. That's the one that's always in there. So that is my, um, uh, little, all my information that I have on cutaway stabilizers. I hope that helps and feel free. I know this is a recording, so we didn't get live questions. So, but feel free to ask questions and we'll be watching for those and have a great day and keep embroidering. Thank you so much, Kimberly. And thanks for uh, doing that presentation for all of us. Again, um, as Kimberly mentioned, you guys are going to watch this in a recording. So unfortunately, we don't have our live comments, but you certainly can comment on the on this video. Um, so if you do that, we'll try and watch these and answer those questions for you. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Uh, happy stitching and we will see you live tomorrow.